This is the only chance you're going to have. And you're teaching, getting taught by cream of the crop players. Learn as many styles as you possibly can. Say that. Learn as many styles as you possibly can. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is, who's a metal drummer here? Okay. Who's a funk drummer? Okay. Country drummer. I'm going to be. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Latin drummer. Reggae drummer. Okay. There's more styles. Way more. Calypso, reggae, all that kind of stuff. Good. Imagine if you're a metal drummer and that's all you can do. Right? That's all you can do is play blast beats. That's cool. But what if all those drummers have taken those gigs and you're waiting in line for a long time? But now, if you would do what I tell you to do, and learn all different styles of music, you can go play a country gig while you're waiting to do a metal gig. Do you see how important it is to be versatile? If you love metal and that's your passion, I respect you for that. But music is music, man. And you could take your metal roots and apply it to bebop. You might be shunned upon, but you might change music. No different than what Korn did to grunge. No different than what grunge did to the 80s of glam metal. You've got to think out of the box, and that's the way I think about drumming. Technique is great. Don't get me wrong. You need technique to do this for a living. But if you don't have it here, this ain't going to make sense. You'll sound like a robot. This, to me, is what drumming is. Here, not here. This is the thing, once you have it here, then you work on your technique. But you have to be able to play a groove and make it feel so good so you can play your rudiments in grooves and not go one and a two and a three and a four. No. You want to have a melody in everything you do. Drum. Melody. Oh, Hooks. There we go. So, back to Daria Jane. The beginning starts out with Max is going to play the beginning, and I write this melody part, which is a drum hook itself. Oh, is it working? I got it. All right, well, well, we'll work on our part, and then All right. we'll try to finagle and see if we get this. So I turn off my strainer, and I was listening, I think, to Morgan Rose at that time, and he did some real cool thing with the hi-hat work. And I was like, you know what? I like that pattern. I'm going to take it. Good musicians borrow, great musicians steal. So I'm gonna steal it, but I'm just gonna kinda make it my own style. But it's the vibe that I was going for. And don't feel so bad if you take an idea from me or from Dennis Chambers or, or Vinnie Caliuda or Greg Bizanet. Anyone know Greg Bizanet? Oh yeah. He's one of my favorites. Good friend of mine too, amazing drummer. One, probably the most underrated drummer in my eyes. He is so musical when he plays. If you want to hear musicality coming from that drummer, it is The Extremist by Joe Santriani, that record. Hands down, one of his best drummers. Um, so, the beginning of Diary of Jane is kind of this like mysterious, like kind of eerie thing. But I didn't want to play an actual groove. I wanted to kind of let it breathe a little bit. And you'll kind of get like this almost not hip-hop kind of vibe on the hi-hat, but more of a melodic kind of thing. So you go ahead, Max, you start All right. Before I told anyone I ever got Breaking Benjamin gig, they heard that intro and everyone called me up and goes, are you the drummer of Breaking Benjamin? And I go, 
well, yes, I am. I can do that. <laughs> and they're like, I could tell by your splash work, your hi-hat work, and your displacing on the snare. That, to me, right there spoke volumes of a drummer. Because now I'm an attribute. I have an, uh, an identity. Anyone know Alex Van Halen? <laughs> we're going to gave that off of his Van Halen. Alex, when you hear him, you know it's Alex Van yeah. Halen. Yeah. Yeah. Drum sound, style, and he swings. The hi-hats, too. Absolutely. You know, he's got that the bell work he does, and all those kind of things. So when you look at that kind of drumming, he's an attribute. When you hear Eddie Van Halen, he's an attribute. You know it's Eddie Van Halen. When I played with Zach Wild, you know it's like, wow, uh, there's Zach Wild. He does a squeal. That's his signature stuff. When you hear Slash, when you hear Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, all these people possess Jimi Hendrix, a style, an identity, hooks. So that's kind of what I was looking for, was something not to take away from the band, but to play a hookish drum beat. Now, once we kick in the verse, it gets a little heavy, a little more aggressive, then I kind of break it down. Now, I could have played the verse crazy, like just opened hi-hats and all that. I wanted to suck it in, and to me, a great drummer is a dynamic drummer. <clears throat> Do we all agree on that? Yes. Any guy that hits hard is just working out with the 125 pounds 20 times going, <laughs> there's a guy that's doing 50 pounds like this perfectly 60 times. But the other guy's trying to do 250, and he's like, come on, man, you got it. And he's like, I got it, I got it, I got it. But the bar's bending. What is more impressive? Seeing the guy do 500 pounds sideways. But the actuality is the guy who's got perfect form and is doing less weight, but effortless. That's how I look at drumming. You can see a lot of drummers looking like they're on the toilet going, <laughs> Every muscle is like, I'm bulging out, you know, and it's like pump, pumpy muscle. And, and, and you see all these veins. Well, when you watch Buddy Rich, he's just like, <laughs> you know, it's like reading a newspaper, Tony Williams. So what am I going to go for a Snickers break or whatever? I mean, he's so like effortless. That's how I looked at drumming was, I might not be the fastest drummer in the world, but honestly, guys. We're all, we're adults here. I'm gonna say one thing to you. Who is the fastest drummer in the world? Eugenie. Nobody! No. Nobody! There's nobody that's the world's fastest drummer, whether you have that W, world's fastest drummer competition, the drum meter. There's no scientific way to prove you're the best drummer in the world. Nothing, not even Buddy Rich. Because if you had Buddy Rich and Tony Williams in the same room, who would, win? No one. No one. Why? Because they're two different animals. One has speed, but the other one can swing. Different than Buddy. It's all about an opinion. So when people say, well, Chad's one of the best, that's an opinion. Or Dennis Chambers is better than Chad. That's an opinion. He is better than me, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like, those are all opinionated people that are going to say that. So when I'm on YouTube, and I see all these like really hurtful words about drummers. Like, I, I remember a guy, I would play a song called Until the End. I was breaking it down for some fans on YouTube. And the guy goes, yeah, well, I can play that song with one hand and drink a cup of coffee in the other one. This is lame. So I went and I stalked him on his, on his YouTube post. And I was like, oh, awesome, bro. I'm, I'm glad you loved my drumming. And... It was like, I, I saw him and he was like a, a weightlifter. No, nothing against weightlifters. That's <laughs> friends with bodybuilding. But he, he works out a lot. Then I watched him drum. I'm like, yeah, man, you want to probably stay on those weights a little longer than drumming. And he hit me back. He's like, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm just jealous of your drumming. I love it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm playing a shuffle, mind you, right? And I'm like, how are you going to play it with one hand? If you can play that with one hand, send me a video right now. Yeah. So you're going to have haters, and, and you're going to have people to discourage you. And they're going to always say, well, that drummer should be a little cleaner. That's your opinion. Everything that someone says about you, even your teachers, it's an opinion. But you're coming to Berkeley for that opinion. You dig? Mm -hmm. You're asking for, what do I need to work on? What do I need to better my playing in? That's what you do. When you can do those kind of things, then you start writing drum hooks, your technique's there. 
you're really clean, your tempo's great, you're, you're thinking of so many different colors, this is where it pays off to go in the studio and play it for your brothers on the radio. Going, yo man, you hear me on the radio? That's the gratification that we get. So, back to the song, the verse kicks in, we'll just take it from the verse. Sure. Okay? And it was kind of like, you ever heard when the levee breaks? Zeppelin? Yeah. Okay? That kind of idea, but I'm a real big uh, fan of Seven Dust. And I love Morgan's playing. If you check them out, check out Morgan's playing, where he displaces kicks a lot. It's really creative. So I took that idea of Seven Dust meets uh, when the levee breaks. All right? swung feel. Now, the producer, this is where it comes to leaving some stuff in the tool shed, even though you want to be in Modern Drummer, this will get you in Modern Drummer, believe it or not. I had to play the hi-hats just straight eight. So okay? Live, I swing. So I go like this. drum parts, I think of it as a melody, a drum hook. And when I came up with this fill, I, can you play the, the harmonic part by yourself? Yeah. You hear those harmonics, correct? Well, I didn't want to hit cymbals hard. This is why I love splashes and I love bells. They're just little nuances. If the gravy is never going to complement the meat and potatoes if they don't taste great, which is your kick and snare, if that is not good in the pocket, foundation, none of this stuff is going to make it any better. Okay? That's the way I look at drumming. Have these things be, you know, solid, then add your gravy. Make these solid, then add your gravy. And this was what the solid part was, the verse. Then the gravy was this little fill I do, which will complement that harmonic hook. And every time I play it live, watching 20,000 people go, well, not all 20,000, they can't even clap in a quarter, <laughs> but the drummers, let's say, you go. When I went to go see shows and watch Neil Peart and everyone air drumming, I physically saw people air drumming to my stuff. Nothing beats that feeling in the world. When someone comes up to you and goes, man, I, I look up to you. you. You don't know how to take that because you would say that to Dennis Chambers. I'd say that to Dennis Chambers. I look up to you, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is why it pays off. So, play the verse again. Yep. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> have the bridge. Now I stole, literally stole this one, was the seven dust riff, which is like from left to right. I think it's, what is it, Terminator? Yeah, I think that's what Something it is. like that. And I took that riff and I applied it to, well, Ben's riff, which Max will play, mm -hmm. and you kind of see how I go from that to this part with the bell. But I don't do it all the time. I make sure that every part of my drumming has a hook. So if the chorus is going to be different than the verse, the bridge is going to be different than the chorus and, and uh, the verse. Everything is blocks. And I didn't want to basically put all my licks in one verse. I wanted to take the, the listener on a journey. Can you even play? Like, 
pretty basic. And then all of a sudden you put a little fill here. You take them for a ride. Don't play all your licks in five seconds. It's like watching Polish fireworks. And it's like... It's like backwards. You're doing the grand finale first and starting the beginning last. Start the beginning like a fireworks show. Start simple. Be like, wow, this is cool. And then it gets more intense and more intense and more intense. And then boom, it's just like sporadically just like going everywhere. All right? So the bridge, we bridge of course, bridge. Um, one, two. that I came up with in my head like okay I hear what he's doing on guitar don't want to take away from him but I just want to add stuff to him okay so that's that's Diary of Jane in a nutshell I'm not gonna play the whole chorus uh, or the Indian all that just get to the to the nitty-gritty of it now I'll try to attempt to play 